Well, we're keeping track of some major legal stories on the docket today. Yeah, so number one, our police zeroing in on the mother in the Georgia hot car death. Another story a lot of my friends talking about, a sleeping sports fan sues ESPN for $10 million for making fun of him and also a preliminary settlement in the NFL concussion lawsuit. Let's dig into it with our legal panel. We have Paige Pate is a criminal defense attorney in Atlanta. Also, Esther Panich is a criminal and civil tri uh, trial lawyer, also based in the Atlanta area. Good to have you both with us. We'll kind of do a speed round of stories with you both. Uh, why don't we start with the lady, because it's your first time with us at this hour. Uh, the mom of the Georgia toddler who died in a hot car is certainly coming under increasing pressure. All investigators will say right now is that Leanna Harris as part of the investigation and she has not been charged with a crime. Her husband, Justin Ross Harris, sits in jail charged with murder and child cruelty. I'm curious what your thoughts are, Esther. What's the strategy here investigators are using um, by sort of talking about the, the, the mom being a, a focus of the investigation? Well, hopefully, in their view, they'll try to get her to cooperate with, the, with law enforcement and provide any testimony that she may have, any evidence she may have about her husband's propensity to use violence, if he had any, uh, or to if he ha ever made any threats of doing something like this to her child. So any help that could be gained by her is something that prosecutors would like to solidify their case against him. Paige, what are your thoughts? Well, first, I think she needs to get a lawyer if she doesn't have one. I understand mm. earlier today she was at the jail visiting her husband, presumably had a conversation, maybe about the case. And as she should know by now, all of those conversations are recorded. So to the extent she's going to cooperate with investigators or simply decide to defend herself, either way, she needs to stop talking and get some good legal advice. Mm. All right, the next case is one that I think sports fans <laughs> everywhere and beyond have a huge interest in. A Yankees fan was caught on camera during a game in April. It was a game broadcast on ESPN right there. There he is, asleep. Well, it happens. So this fan is suing ESPN for $10 million, he says, for making fun of him. Andrew Rector says that ESPN used all kinds of words there. But the question here is, guys, I mean, does he have any kind of case, 10 million bucks for showing him asleep on TV? No. I don't think so, no. <laughs> I, you know, normally, someone does have a, a claim for defamation uh, if the broadcasters had said something that was clearly false about him, something that was defamatory, that then caused some injury to his reputation. These comments just seem like part of the game. And if you're going to take that seat and you're going to fall asleep, then you need to suffer the consequences of being humiliated for doing so. Right. Yeah, so let, let, me, let me just read the statement, Esther, from ESPN to be clear here. They say the comments attributed to ESPN and our announcers were clearly not said in the telecast. The claims presented here are wholly without merit. Uh, you know, what happened here is this was posted on YouTube, but there were all kinds of comments listed on the site here, and that's where some of the more outrageous things were said. But do you have rights, Esther, as a fan when you go to a game? Do you have any privacy rights when you're sitting in the stands there? Not if you are sitting in an open space. You have no reasonable expectation of privacy. So people can overhear your conversations. I mean, no. The answer is no. Anyone can sue anyone for anything at any time. And this is just an example of somebody who is abusing the system um, to, you know, uh, frankly, to bring more negative attention upon himself. I'm not exactly sure why he would want to make this public, but filing the lawsuit makes it become public. God so bless America. <laughs> <I guess so. laughs> one, can we get one last story in with the two of you since we have sure. you here? A preliminary settlement has been reached in the NFL concussion suit. We've been watching the story here closely. The league is agreeing to no cap on the funds that are available to players battling diseases related to concussion. Now, this suit does not cover current NFL players, we should uh, point out. I I'm curious, though, maybe you can walk us through, Esther, what you know. Why does it not cover current NFL players, and who does it cover then? I'm not exactly sure why it doesn't cover current NFL players, but it does cover past NFL players. And my understanding of the settlement is that there is no cap for any damages that can be proven because of injuries sustained while playing football. Um, and I know that this, there was a previous settlement that had been rejected by the judge, and this was basically sent back to the parties and try to come up with a new resolution. And this settlement is expected to go through at a hearing which will be forthcoming. Reaction? 
Paige, well, your turn. What, what I think is important is that there's still no admission of liability here. I mean, the NFL has agreed to make some payments. A lot of money will go to folks who have been injured or who have suffered the consequences of their lack of diligence in the past, but they're still not admitting that what they were doing in the past was wrong or somehow negligent. And I think that's important. It is a big settlement, though, and a lot of former players are expected to sign on to this. Uh, Paige Bate, Esther, thanks so much for being with us. Really appreciate it, guys. Thank you.